we're coming into bringing them into Sukta Baddha Konasana. So you get to sit on your bum. <coughs> bend one knee, support it to bend. Bend the under the knee, I use it with my foot. And bring them into your hip crease. Get close enough to them that you're both making this diamond shape of Sukta Baddha Konasana, which is this <coughs> reclined cobbler's pose in yoga. And if you can see here, I am nesting their, their glutes in the sole of my foot. So my foot is rotated and facing up and I'm just nesting their buttocks there. So Thai massage is an intimate practice. Um, so essentially, uh, you want them to just be able to relax into you. It might take a little time, they, they might be sort of like this and then they feel you're holding here. So they're like, oh, then they can sort of drop into you. So you give it a little pause. And um, to help them, first of all, we are going to flush the, gall, uh, the liver, liver lines, these inner lines, because that will help them with the, um, the sense of um, releasing the, the, the core kind of tension pattern in the body. It comes from the liver energy. It's like, you know this already, but the Chinese medicine side of the liver is the, it's like the army commander. Mm -hmm. it, it gives the orders to mobilize the troops, which is what the gallbladder does. It then carries out the order in terms in the bile. So from here we're going to start little tapping motion. So we're making a little fist, but we're not tapping on the bone. Again, on that inner line. So the inner line is exactly, do you see the seam of my trousers? That's the gallbladder. Before we were working the spleen one, which is just off the shin bone. Now we're on the, the gallbladder line where the seam of your trousers naturally falls. The middle of the inner leg. And I'm creating a little tapping. And this is good, it's good you're doing this as well, because I tend to teach this in yoga class before we start, these little tapping motions, get the chi flowing, the blood flowing, and obviously the, the liver is, rules over the blood, so does the spleen, so you can really get that flush of fresh blood. Mm. Sound like a vampire. Well, let's give this, we, could, we could do this ourselves before we start practicing. Yeah, then. absolutely, all the chi ones, and then to your kidneys yeah. before you start, into your lung points, that's, you know, if you have more time, we'll go through that. On yourself. So when we've done that tapping, we just do a nice stroking, soothing for the parasympathetic nervous system. Stroking can do so much to help the letting go. Remember, sometimes less is more. It's always my big lesson in life, but <laughs> it's um, <laughs> <they chuckle. laughs> um, you can then catch the top of the hip flexors here. So you just kind of snuggle in until you feel them like put tight there. You just start to create a shimmer. Remember, your feet are there or already massaging their glutes, really, by just cupping their glutes. And then just creating a shimmer back and forth. My arms are straight again, so no effort. Once I've got that nice, even rocking motion, then using your, your fingers on the kidney lines again, which is the top of the thigh, mid-thigh, then I just start with the pulse. I'm still pulsing from my Dantian. up and down and then from here again another little stroke out just flush everything out and you hold on to the knees and now imagine the only way I can describe it really is just cupping from underneath the knee is folding a taco so you're folding one or tortilla and then folding in the other tortilla or pancake let's say crepe and then as it's happening, so I'll show you slowly, but your feet are creeping up the spine, still with the soles turned up. So they are like in a sort of Charlie Chaplin, out as much as you can rotate your feet as possible. And so I'm traveling up and I'm actually coming in quite close. And now this means that I've, I'm on the back, I'm mirroring the sacrum, and then I actually go up a little bit higher up towards the kidneys. That's about as far as you usually tend to go. So you're literally supporting the whole of their pelvis and the sacrum there in your legs. Now they're floating. So Will's back, his tailbone isn't on the ground now. I can, mm. I could put my hands under. Yeah. yeah. So your legs have gone all up, all up the side body then? All the you, way up you, to yeah, here. you want to be underneath. So you're so not the you're, side. You're yeah. literally pouring them. So you get in as close as the spine as my you heels can. Are touching. Exactly. <laughs> if you can get your heels touching, that is the best, best option. Oh. It doesn't, it's not always possible for no, you. Not. Touching. But it's either side of the spine. So your heels shouldn't be on the spine. They're just on those, I call them the train tracks, the adrenal lines. Mm. They run up here. You can feel them. They can be quite kind of tight. So my feet are going up here. 
as far as I can and then coming down yeah so I've, I've stayed up here and and then from here I've stayed up here um, I now want to like come down slowly rocking onto a so as I rock here if I slow it down you see I'm rocking his whole glutes being massaged into that point when we did the um, tiger drinking water you should have the heel now sinking into the side of the glute it's like ooh, but then it gets relief and you shift over to the other glute yeah, so if you're receivers and you feel that their feet aren't under enough, then reposition them. So your feet need to be really under, closer in. Not so much on the side, more turn the soles up. You see if you can help him scoop his feet under. So my yeah, feet, Gally will do this it. is quite a, this is quite a, so it's like this. It's not a side. Charlie Chaplin. That will feel a bit achy for them, it will feel uncomfortable. You've got to try and get your foot round, you know, like babies do. So I've swung their hips. So when you're in this position, remember this from yoga, this position, it's like a gentle twist. It's also a really nice release for this IT band here. Again, another flood for the gallbladder line. So I'm just pouring weight, rolling, slip the foot, keep it under, and then I'm traveling down. Yeah, does that make sense? Do we need to try that one again? Yeah, going up, rock, legs together, Heel goes one leg, creeps up, then the foot creeps up again, high as you can. So I'm just above so the kidneys. The toes, are the toes actually on the, on the back? Or on toes the are just pointing out um, here, like... It's on the here. side of the rib cage, are they? Yeah. 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 Right. Oh, so I get to the bottom of the rib cage, that's about usually where you get to. But you're not on the side, the feet should be like that. So if it feels uncomfortable, tell him to no, rotate it just his feel anything. It just doesn't feel like anything. I don't uh, think everybody can do their feet like that. I don't know if you can yeah. actually do that to your feet. Not <laughs> everyone can, I know. That's why I said, so don't, don't worry about it too much because it doesn't go like that. Um, that's to do with your spleen line as well. It's to do with not being earthed enough uh, in your system when the ankles are unstabilized. Um, and so they, they don't have much mobility, they're locked. So it's also about not trusting earth, not rooting. There's lots to it, but anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I try and leave out the detail. And then we walk down here, we're gonna pause. This is where it's really important if we can, make a, a triangle shape to literally mirror the sacrum. So you know that the sacrum is like this sacred triangle. Yeah. Now my feet just want to mirror that and like a, an open mm -hmm. sort of folded lotus, just hold like a crony hold, just nest the sacrum until it releases its holding. At first it might be like this, and then gradually it just lets go. So this is like a cranial hold, and you could just let them just stay like this for a few moments and just breathe. Because of demonstrating, I'll go on, but I just want you to know that this is a good place to stop. Now if you know these points, which I don't need to teach you, but when you do that, the pelvis weight, you've got these six points under here. This is what would be hard to show you. <coughs> but this is where I would do um, the... Because uh, we do our Vs, do you remember, our, around the... Yeah. Exactly, yeah. the V. You call it V. Yeah, well, with men it's not really V, but you know, <laughs> men are talking about the V. Yeah, but that's good, that's all good. Um, so it's kind of like the letter V, it's true, that's that's the letter V you're doing here now. If you know that already, this is what you would do. That's one of our steps. In a really nice way steps. of getting to it. Can you see how effortless it is to just pour your weight? So this, this might is quite be... a nice position to do it in, isn't it? Yeah. Because up on this, but like... Yeah, so then if you're rounding, if you're compensating your body, you're transferring <clears throat> tension, then the practitioner can't sustain... And their foods. sacrum's falling open at the same time. Yeah, yeah I'm going to try so this it. is a really good way of going, okay, this is where I press the V. Now, how much pressure can you put? Trust me, well, you can't put a lot of pressure. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't come with a rule. I would adapt to the individual. Because it's really important you don't go with mental rules and apply that to a body, because everybody's different. So let's say, for example, um, now I need a lot of pressure in there, but mm. someone who's got a lot of trauma and blockage in their base, they need to be opened over time. So you'd start a little bit and just mm. a little bit can do a lot. And then, mm. then you can feel it gives a bit and then slowly sinking in. And then again, I come into the midline and then I'm up here. So it's just about slowly. Um, Again, just remember that principle, you can't go too deep, you can go too far. So just go, think really slow and you'll feel the body yield and then you can keep, it kind of calls you into it. But when it pushes you away, just stop there and just, just breathe. So you've done the V in that way. Now I like to come to the other two uh, major points here. So you've got pointy pockets, so it's hard to demonstrate. So 
what are they? <laughs> yeah. So you feel the hip bone here and just off the hip bone, just like slip. You, you know these points anyway, you just sink in. It's a good place to get to them. And this is a psoas release as well, other than just being an, a major acupressure point for all pelvic disorders, also like sexual blocks that are going on. This is a very good nurturing point to help that chi and the currents open up. So these are the bottom two corners above the hip? Place. It's just, there's, no, there's one just oh, no. top. We're going to the top ones first, then we come to the bottom ones. Oh, okay. okay. There's two that I'm only concerned with mm. we're doing today. So the psoas essentially is releasing, so I'm just rolling off the hip there is the first one. It's like going slow, 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 slow. Sink, sink, sink. And then it's the one just below the bottom ones. Breathing in and roll. And again, you know, you don't really need to use the tips of the thumbs if you can use more the pads because the psoas is an area that, like we talked about before, but that's psychic muscle the soul it goes into fight flight freeze so it might spasm again it doesn't mean you're doing something wrong but it needs to release so that that means it just needs slower holding so even I sometimes just let rest my hands after I've done that instead of palm pressing because you've done these act push points here I just rest my palms and that can be incredibly nurturing because remember you're doing cranial sacral here really you've got the support of sandwiching the body you're totally holding them they're being suspended and you're meeting them here so they feel like in the area that you know is the inner child area they're feeling the most held and supported so you don't need much so if you feel like at some points okay i don't really want to do that v or whatever you know just even this can do so much and already i've noticed will's legs because he had he had a in a femur injury so usually they're a little bit more like this and this one's much more protected but already just from doing that bit of pelvis work he's dropped in a bit more it, they've opened naturally not because i forced them but because he's felt really held so that um they just relax and just let go mm -hmm. they stopped pushing me out or fighting me and and so that holding is a really good place to just go really still there and take time because you've been doing a lot of soft rocking dance like movements and then when you come into the rhythm of just stillness it's even more profound really because you've had that flowing movement so from this, so we call it the folding the tortilla movement in Supta Baddha Konasana. Um, we are going to kind of keep them in the same position, but we're going to pick up their feet and take their knees wide, like an Balasana in yoga, which means the blissful baby. And you draw them off until you float the back of the sacral hip joint off so that your feet are freed up. Then we can come to standing, which is a nice relief for us because we've been in these sitting kneeling positions. And we're just going to do the, the bus driver. This helps make sure that you're not tensioned, that you're relaxed, you've moved your body into a stretching out. Do you want to stand up a little bit more? You can pick the legs up so you're on the straight. That's it. Don't, don't feel like you have to compensate in your body because that means it's not sustainable. You need to be relaxed. And I'm just lunging, bending one knee and the other. Try to come to standing up a little bit more and bend your knees more. Mm. If you're tall, we want to bend more here, but it doesn't mean you need to bend here. Keep the top body, like we're in goddess pose, really. You know, like goddess pose in your war. <laughs> Semi-warrior. <laughs> Get your goddess pose, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> that so from this rocking... Um, it's, you know, it's like this, some people call this, this posture in time, they call it the bus driver, because it's like you've got a big wheel on the bus and you're just sort of rolling it side to side. So once you've got the sort of opening swinging motion, then again we create an activation. It's you're using your knees to assert the acupressure points now. So I'm going to get into this sciatic line again, just off the sit bones, pull my knees in and bring the soles of his feet to mirror the ceiling. One point and draw back. Some good knee clicks going on. Next point in the midline, back of the thigh. Sink, draw the feet to mirror the ceiling. Is, do, 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 if his knees are going out like this, that's, do, I that's bring, fine. do I bring them in? You don't need to bring them in, you just need to bring them so that you can uh, get to the back of them. So it will naturally, when you start to kneel on it, they will naturally come in a bit. So. You, can, you can turn your hands a little bit. To yeah. them in. I tend to slightly, like let's say, Will doesn't necessarily do that, but if they're really wide out, 
I can still do it like this. So you, if you just turn your hand slightly, you But if you feel it's it. awkward for you, then slightly. Oh, it's actually okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Slightly rotate in. And you're working with the breath as you give, aren't you? With so this is it. Deep breath in. You guys are messaging it quite well with the breath. And exhale. I use Ujjayi breath, or any breath is good for you. Remember to have your arms straight. It's going to be too much tension for you keeping that going. Because you don't have to feel like you can hold. Like this is effortless. My arms are straight. I'm just cupping my heels. So you want to stand up. Just bend your knees. And let the weight drop in a little bit more and down. So you're moving your head tien. Keep your arms straight. And we just, we would only need to do it once, but I'm just demonstrating it again. Midline. Creep up. Top point. I often adjust people in yoga like this one. Yeah, she's super open. I tend to do something here as well, but it's up to you. But when I get to that final point, I like to press the kidney point here. Which can oh. feel really nice. Which is that babbling brook. Yeah, that dip. We didn't see it before. So well. And then going back. So that's a very happy baby you got there. And then making sure you don't snap the legs. Fold one, bring the other back. We're just going to swing like a smiley face. Swing the legs. Snap. And uh, let's try to edit out things we've had time. So if we, uh, we go from here into El Torado, take your right foot forward. Left back. Take, take a little bit further, step back. Back leg even more further back. So you're in a warrior pose, essentially. So that back leg even more. There's going to be a reason for it because we're going to lunge. So then turn from their hips, rotate their feet in. So it's supported in the back of your pelvis. So your body is resisting that and then contraction out their legs together. One long line, draw back, bending into that left leg if you need to. El Torero, because you press your chest, you know the bullfight, it goes, presses the chest, this proud sort of king pigeon movement. Inhale, exhale, lunging back. Inhale, press the chest forward, so you don't collapse your heart, and draw back. So that lunging movement. So then we're in the perfect setup to come into the Kama Sutra. So, this is a bit like changing the baby's nappy. Bring the feet together. <laughs> but if the legs, knees keep bending here. Yeah, no, the, the, the legs will pretty much, I mean, see what happens. It doesn't matter if they do. But you could, if you like to, if, if you feel that they're enough with it, they can put their hands on their knees. So you put your hands on their knees. But if you feel they're completely zoned out and sleeping, then just let them. Don't worry about the hands on the knees. And it doesn't matter that they fold a bit. It's drawing them up here, you come down low, you draw them up, and then sneak your thighs underneath the back of their lower back. Then their legs can bend, and you come in close to the backs of their knees, come over your shoulder. Now if you feel you're too far out, then just snuggle in a bit until you're sitting, and you can uncurl your toes. <laughs> so let the flats of your feet rest on the ground. I can't see, okay, can you see if they've got their feet? Now he, he, he's got to be up in your lap. Yeah, so yeah, don't, don't avoid it. it. Sometimes yeah. you need to take a little <laughs> sort of snuggle in, yeah. Mm. So this is Kama Sutra pose. <laughs> <laughs> like this, I wish I wasn't it looks more dirty when you're a man and it went the other way around. But. <laughs> So, you know, this is incredibly nice and lengthening for the sacrum. There's a slight, like, drawing motion, which is releasing compression in the lower back. So you make sure, because if you get them on the calves, that would be quite uncomfortable. Receivers, make sure they've got the back of your knees over their shoulders, and they need to get down low if they're tall. Then we're going to take a bear hug and hold on to your own wrists, yeah? A little bit of a squeeze there, which is kind of, you know, again, gallbladder. Inhale, and lift the kidneys with your knees as essentially they're sliding, and the kidneys are getting all this kidney jing boost through your knees, and it's funny how the knees correspond to the kidneys in, th in uh, Thai massage and in Chinese medicine. When you need to treat the knees for knee problems, you treat the kidneys. So you can see these pathways are connected already. Now my knees are lifting his kidneys, building that 
primal light, youthful life force in the body, stretching out the lower back, mm. and I'm leveraging back. How do I relax here? Is it not relaxing? <laughs> well, maybe you need to press your chest forward a little bit more and draw further back. I mean, I like it to let my head go, but it's up to you that it feels okay. It doesn't have to be very long, just little pulses. And then when you, you come out, you catch hold of their knees and draw them down here. So then you're going to be like a, dock, a duck <coughs> and just waddle out. Wack, 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 wack. Waddle out. And we get them into this position. Then I come into cupping their heels. I come up and I come back into my Hanuman stance. This sideways sort of chivalrous, imagine you've got the rose in your mouth mm -hmm. and just place the back of the knees. So you are facing, I know you might not feel like you can see me, but try to face their head with your navel. Now make sure you get the back of your knees on your thigh, not the calf, because that will be tender. Draw his knees more into you. Slightly, if your legs are taller, you need to slightly angle in to make it lower. Mm. Yeah? But my legs are shorter than his, so I have to come up a bit on my tiptoe. So play around with the ratio there, because what we're going to do is leverage him into a sacrum float. So this section of Thai massage is called the sacrum float, if you ever want to refer to it. If you only did this in your sequence, it, it does so much in helping them let go. Especially very good healing for the Svadasana Chakra. So now, because his legs are longer than mine, I am on my tiptoes. I am going to cross the inner foot, not at the ankle, the inner foot over the outer foot. So can we all get that? Okay. Inner foot, yeah. Just that's it. Just crossing. Now I can create a leverage. So what I want to do is my arm starts bent and I straighten my arm and leverage, and that's why I'm on my tiptoes, because I need to lift and float. I don't know if you can see, sorry, well. But his sacrum is actually floating off the ground when this arm's straight. Then you can get this. And again, you have to move from your Hatien. So moving from the power center, start to just create this float. And for them, what you can ask me, they feel incredibly relaxing. But at first, they might be helping you. you might, they might not know, oh, I'm holding. I can let go. So if you notice there's sort of very light to float, then you're like, oh, they're still holding on there. <laughs> He's helping me, yeah. So, but you are on the ground, I think. I so, are you on the ground, Arjun? Um, a little bit. Yeah. Try hard. to come onto your tiptoes a bit more. Yes. Now, and press that's down. It. Fully, press now press way. down. There's a leverage movement. So remember, press down, straighten this arm, and then you'll get this beautiful float. And all we need is an equalised pulse. It doesn't matter if it's really fast, but it's even or if it's really subtle or slow. Just find the rhythm that suits them, because you're reading the system whether you know it or not, and you're in response to them. So if Will's really fast, I need to really slow him down. I need to just balance the doshas, essentially. There's an Ayurvedic principle in Thai massage. So then he just needs subtle, but just, you know, little bits. But I'm moving from my power center. You know how effortless this can be if this arm's straight. I'm just moving from that Can you feel my red blend? No. Yeah. Is it already? Are you on your tiptoes? No, not. But if I go on tiptoes, I do get a few stuff yeah, in yeah, hands. Yeah, well, it's quite a quad burn. It's yoga. You're still doing yoga. If you were doing yoga right now, you'd be like, yeah, it's okay. So it's just like, whew, okay. But you'll feel good for it afterwards. <laughs> Thigh workout. Yeah, it's a little bit of a quad burn. So, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's Michael Jackson, he's back. <laughs> Risen from the dead. So from here, I'm just going to again, remember this perfect fit of the, the root, the mound of Venus here at the root of the thumb. It just slips in and nests into the psoas point on, uh, off the hip bones, the elect crest. And I'm just now, what I'm going to do is release the sacrum through the hip bones. So I'm going to pour my weight, rock into that left hip bone. And I might feel it's tight and there's more movement in one and the other and then move to the left. Of course, with the pelvis, you know, the left side of the body corresponds to the, the female line, ancestral line, the right side to the male. So we're just noticing, okay, you're not just asserting something, you're feeling, okay, there's more give this side. 
and there might be more restriction here. So you're also reading through your hands, sensing through listening, through touch, where it might be more tight. One side of the psoas might be tighter than the other. And it's, it's a fair amount of pressure because I'm straight arms here, but this is actually good. It really releases their lower back. And the sacrum is really spreading open wide. And then I just... Wait, just the, the knees together? Yes, yeah, so the knees oh. are together on the... Make sure the back of the knees are on your thighs here. They're tucked in so that you can... That's it. That's it, you got it. So shifting weight side to side. And then we stabilise in the min in the middle and I just create a little firm but slow pouring of weight. Really take your time and grounding the whole pelvis to open and it can feel such a flooding of energy through the sacrum. This is why it's very important obviously that they come to you without things in their pockets and it's best that you don't try tie massage in jeans or belts. So once you've sunk there, this is where we're ready to do um, a tummy massage. So if you feel it's warm enough in the space, because you can actually do tummy massage really with the clothes down as well. Um, but this is where you keep them, but you're sitting down now, so it's a bit more relaxing for you. But you keep their legs bent because that creates slack in the abdomen. And you want to draw their boxer shorts line low if possible. Maybe you could pass us some oil. And pass yeah, so there's some. Pass this round. Uh, Lewis and Rest of this by, just behind you over there. God, this and is then, fantastic. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can get on those things. Yeah. yeah. Can yeah. some rolls put it on too. That's amazing. Here you go. So I just collect a little bit. I start just collecting. Just when you get it, you just place it. Ten minutes. Okay. So your hands will be already warm by this point. You've got lovely massage oil. So the same principle now. We're going to get into this principle of heel to toe. Heel to toe, it's not a ballet class, but you know what I mean, heel to toe. <laughs> and we're going to move like a clock. Everything is, this is the centre of the universe. This is the microcosm, the macrocosm. So all the energy to move the waste from the organs to get the organs optimally working needs to move in towards the centre. So we start here. So this is the point that happens to be like the had tien, as it were. And the fingertips, it's all like rough ratio with, you know, where your hands are. We engage at the heel first and we roll in. Now that also goes to release the diaphragm. And then we slide the hand to the left. So we're moving from the left um, to the right, because of course the sigmoid colon's down here, uh, or on the left side. You need to keep constantly. Yeah. I'll just turn. Let's go here, this way. So this. So basically, you know the way that the colon enlarges the testing and goes round and we release out through the left side of the body, the sigmoid colon and then the, the rectum, you move out through this way. So we've got to kind of move in clockwise. So we start with the heel of hand towards the midpoint, fingers. So then we go heel of the hand, move over to the side. One hand is over the other side. And then here we get engage the fingers down first and roll into the center. And then I come this side Use the heel of the hand into the center. So you're just finding the way it feels flowing to kind of move from the outer edges to push everything into the center. When you come around to here, it just has to be the fingers first, then the heel. And again, you would go quite slow. I'm demonstrating fairly fast, but you really could take your time here to make this full circle, everything moving into the midline. When you're here, the heel of the hand, you're releasing the diaphragm, so their breathing might open up a little bit, but this breathing might have been restricted because this diaphragm was so tight because the psoas, the fight, flight, freeze muscle is tight because it connects into the psoas. So don't worry if it feels a bit tender for people, it will do with tummy matters sometimes, but just that gentle coaxing and then we move here. Remember, you can do this with clothes on, so if you, it's not like you don't have oils handy or whatever, you don't have to do it with the oils. So I would do that quite slowly, like three times at least, from here. And, and then you've done, you've been doing working with the head, the, you know, with the dantian. 
So from here, this whole midline is really helpful um, to release. So I would just take my thumbs just below the navel, take an inhale. So this is what they call the two and a half chun, which is two and a half thumbs. So two and a little half. So there it is. For some people, it will be equal between the pubic bone and the, the navel. You know this from your work already, but you just slowly sink in. And then it's more of a trigger point, so you just hold. So with, with Thai massage, you're often not holding for very long. But with this point, I tend to use it more like a trigger point, which it is actually a whole other healing art, but often overlaps. And you just hold and wait until it's released. Doesn't even need to be that deep. And then slowly coming out. Make sure you don't come out too fast, because I know this sounds funny, but it can actually bring up abandonment issues. So at this point, it's very important we keep the hands connected so we don't suddenly go like that and they're like, oh, where did you go? You won't know, but on a somatic level, they'll feel mm. slightly like you've abandoned them, but you're not there with them. So with the tummy massage, very important. And once you've made that depth of connection, you, you keep that. And so when you release out, you're still holding, but you've released the pressure of those points. Then we come to the two pelvic points that we're working with for this exercise, but you could go on to your whole TJ massage here. So I'd find these two points off the hip bone here and slowly go through the layers. Remember, you're not just working those acupressure points, you're also releasing the psoas, which has all this old conditioning of fight, flight, freeze programs in it. So you go in slow. And then that's a slight drawing back, like I'm leaning back again as well, a little bit drawing down mm. and back. So it's not just an in, there's a little bit of drawing back as well. So that you could take your time with the long one point. Then we come to the second point, which you guys know, just off the hip bone, just below. That one's really powerful for healing like most of the, most of the sexual issues. If you're working with these points, it's, it's opening that whole flow, the pranic flow. Can I try third? I'm sorry, which one was the first one? Yeah, the first one's just about thinking about the top of the hip bone and then just slide in. And the second one is just like two fingers below. Mm -hmm. This is here and then here. And then it's a slow, slow engagement. You can go really deep. And once you're in deep, then you can sort of draw back a little bit. So your arms end up being straight. And remember, you're going to keep your connection, even though you're releasing slowly. Really important you come out as slowly as you went in. And then you just hold. Now that holding might go on a good, you know, few minutes. For the purpose of demonstration, I'll let it be quite quick. But you could really stay there and just cranial hold to witness their breathing. So let's say we've we've been there a while and we keep the hand connected. I could seal that whole is that, area. Is that related to abundance as well? This whenever you work on the second chakra area, which is below the navel inside, those issues are fear of loss, abandonment, fear of rejection, mm -hmm. those kind of patterns. Mm -hmm. um, so you know you keep your connection. So yeah, let's say I bring his top down, but I keep my hand there connected so he feels held. And and from here. I'm going to come into the, the Russian dance. There's so many other things I want to do, but I'm trying to edit myself as I go along. This is more. This is more. So, uh, so you've still got that connection here. You've released one leg. Keep the leg closest to you. So this is the right leg I've got here now, because I ended on, yeah, that's it. So then I come up again into my Hanuman stance. I can keep my connection there on his navel. And I step over. And then I can release his hand, my hands from his back hmm? You just go back. Yeah. So I'm and down. It's okay at this point that my hands are supporting. Yeah. I mean that is a good point. <laughs> just like. Put it on your hair. Put it on your hair. You can put it on there. <laughs> you could rub. I mean, this is. It's just like um. You have a little hand towel, probably. Hand yeah, towel, good idea. Yeah. I never really think of it, I just carry on, but it is a good point. I mean, if I'm using my hands next to... Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it would be good to have a... That's a really good point, have a hand towel nearby, so you can just sort of clear your hands from it. So, one leg is going down? So, yeah, you release the outer leg. And so, you just sit back, so you have a pause for a moment. You're still hooked in, so you can sit back on your bum. 
You take a pause so your body just has a little moment to relax. And then you're going to just step over their outer hip, which you've already done. Perfect. So yeah, you just bring that foot over. You guys have all got that now. That's it. And now we're going to come back into that same Hanuman stance. And we essentially want to have this left knee in alignment to the hip. And then I'm going to bring his knee, which has been in the hinge of my hip, diagonally across towards the end of my knee. Yeah, even a little bit further. So there's a little bit of a stretch here, again, along that gallbladder line. So what's going to happen is the sacrum float this side now, but I'm going to make rotation. So same principle of leverage, pressing down and watch my body move. I'm just lunging and making circles with his ankle, which translates up into the knee, which translates up into the hip. Moving as a unified whole, as one. Now you feel the sense of the sacred dance. This, this is the tantric principle, that unified moving as one. And you're leveraging him up. Now we can do a little release here where I draw down on this ankle and just create a little release into the back of the sacrum. So if the sacrum is the triangle here, midpoint, four fingers in the center of the sacrum, I'm going to roll out. So I get to it here, I've lunged, I find it's the center line, so basically the, you know, the tailbone, just go up a bit higher, okay. that's it, and then pull as you lunge. So I've got my back toe curled under so I can lunge and draw, so it's a nice release from the sacroiliac joint, so yeah. you're actually so on the joint. Pulling the muscle out from the edge of the yeah. spine from underneath. It's like that motion. Yeah, you look like you've got it, that's it. And it's just a release there from the sacroiliac joint. Then I turn my body. Now I am facing his arms, which you want to make sure are outspread. And they need to be wide. Okay, it's one o'clock, cool. So I am turning my navel to face their right hip. Once I've got that, I am first of all going to start here just cupping hold of that hip. And with straight arms, I'm just going to leverage back and draw. And then I'm going to walk the body like we did with our feet. We're now doing it with our hands, essentially. We're getting to the acupressure points along the spine. So the fingers are together. And I'm just going to find the midpoint, the back of the sacrum again, and draw. And then trace up the spine, all on the right side of his spine. Now again, if you can get this down, it's like a wave movement where the heel to the like the fingertips. So it's kind of like this doesn't look right to me. Yeah. Should we be on this side of it? No. Go back to how you are. Just step your foot over her. Yeah. That's it. And okay, which feet does he work on? This one, right? Yeah. So you need to turn, not to me, but turn up to this way. So just swivel your hip round, if you can help from Kate, just swivel yeah. that way. <clears throat> That's it. That's it. Yeah, you got it. And then you just catch hold of here and draw back. Yes, I do. Yeah. 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 I know, I know. <laughs> so here, I'm just leveraging back, pulling that muscle. Remember, it's the train track, so he's getting to that band of muscle that's raised. This, this needs more squatting than that knee, isn't it? That should be down. Or am I getting back to front? Yeah, I mean, he needs, he, he sort of needs to, to hinge a bit more like this. Okay. He's to create the traction. blocking his movement mm. by staying here. All you need to do is allow more of a... Mm. So just to show you, my body is just doing this. Okay, I'm going to, onto the leg. Yeah, you don't have to go all the way. You won't be able to go all the way down. It's more like that. So maybe your arm... Yeah. And the idea is that you, you're creating this rocking so you can get exactly. under the spine. Exactly. You just yeah. want to find the flow. You know you're blocked yeah. the moment. If your foot's like this at right angle, you can't do anything. You get blocked. That's what you were just finding. So if you allow it to come down, then we're rocking, got healing. Leverage, You've got some leverage to peel the muscle away from the spine. You can't get all the way up, but you get most of the way and then travel down. That all looks really good. So it's not the side ribs. Make sure you're making contact with the tips of your fingers at the edge of the spine. So this is like opening the pathway, basically. Yeah, you're yeah, opening yeah. all the acupressure points along the pathway, the Sushima nervous central channel, the nervous system. <laughs> yeah. 
So then creep forward on all fours. We're not going to do tiger here. No. Um, Just do that on the side. Yeah, well, I have to do the side position. But I will do that last. We've got to do the banana split. Can't leave the banana split out. <laughs> Just have finishing here that ball, remember? Yep. So, come over to the other side. We'll move fairly swiftly because we make sure we have time. <coughs> Pick up this other leg. Remember, you will take your time in real time, but we're just doing a bit faster. And leverage. So you're picking up their left leg on your left leg. Their left leg, your left leg. I am facing towards his knee. Go on to the other opposite leg. Instead of me saying left or right, just do the opposite leg you haven't done. Is it? It's your same leg up as theirs. So it's my left leg, his left leg. That's it. And I'm going to cut the knee, place my hand onto the right foot. Sorry, their left foot. And then you might feel the little creaks. Yeah. <laughs> Spirals, make some circles, float in the sacrum, nourishing into the hip joint. Very good for creating synovial fluid in the knee joint there, where it's supported but it's undergoing circles and rotations. So, from here, from that spiraling leverage kind of movement, then um, we're going to move into, yeah, where we release up through the spine. So I've, cre I've drawn that into the hip crease. Yeah, you guys have got it. Bring it even closer in. Make sure it's the back of the knee on, not the calf, because that will be tender for them. Yeah? So you've snuggled it into the hip crease. Then I turn to face the opposite direction. So that's it. You're, you're sort of directly facing into their left wrist now. So that's that way that they're in? Yeah. You got it? The right arm. So you'll make sense in a moment because you want to release their spine. So my back toe is curled under so I can go through this leveraging. I am now going to cup under here, draw back, and my forefingers are in the midpoint of the sacroiliac joint, remember? Drawing back, and then I'm traveling up the spine, pulling the muscle on the left side of his spine away from the spine, going up those adrenal lines. And it's, I'm trying to get a rolling wave-like motion of heel to toe, heel to toe, or sort of heel to fingertips. Try not to crush your own abdomen, just keep that flowing, drawing back motion. So you're not down so much, try and like lean back and see your arms are straight. You guys have got it, so it's like a dance. And the last one, you can uncurl your back foot and just draw back. Here. That's it. Pick up the foot. And we're going to turn them into the side position. So the best way to do this is so that you reset. You, you've taken your leg out, but then you bring it back in. So you've got your position and your Hanuman stance. Now this is the Russian dance bit. And it looks more complicated than it is. All I want you to think about is forget their leg. Just imagine that, that, that there's no leg on yours. All I want you to do is swap your knees. So your left knee goes down, your right knee comes up. So it's going to look like this. Yeah. It's just the Russian dance. If you think about their leg, you're like, oh, what the hell do I do? And you don't need to. That's it. And just let their legs slop down. You guys got that best I've ever seen, actually. Very good. Cool. You just want to have... Yeah. You just want to have your knee... You're over her leg, so come with that leg, yeah, that's it, and then bring the other leg up again, that's it. Is that right? So it's, yes, that's it. So here you're just in this Hanuman stance like this, you're creating a little twist for their body, so now spin your body round a little bit, and pick up, and this is where you want to have the pillow handy, let's see if we've got the pillow, and you're going to roll their head, so place it beside them, and you're going to roll them, onto their side, let their knee drop down, and you're just in this little squatting position. 
Yeah. Yeah. You just let that knee drop down and you pull out your leg, as it were. So let that, yeah. Drop down and now you can pull, your, you can all come out and turn to face their back. This is the closing posture. Yeah. So, I think because of the timelines, I'm not going to be able to do all of the lines here, but I could sort of demonstrate it really, really, really quickly. Well, we, we do quite a lot of that already, actually. Okay. Yeah. So what I would do here is this diamond squeezing together along those adrenal lines and then coming down. What's the diamond? Diamond is like this. Yeah, come and have a look. It's yeah. nice. It's mm -hmm. nice. So it's just squeezing, pressing in, and it feels lovely because it flushes the central nervous system. And of course, all these act pressure, like there's the liver point here, there's you've got all these key organs where these these um the nervous system is spraying out to. So if you never have time but you want to just do a fundamental release for them, then just doing this diamond flush and even like meridian work just along. So you don't have to think about points, think more about meridian lines all the way along so that can be a massage in itself just working the spine like that especially if they've got fever or virus or their immune system's down that will actually really help them and so when you've done that this is the thing i didn't know if we have time for but i just want to show it to you even if it's quicker than i'd like to show it to you you come into a kneeling position bring your knees to snuggle in quite close to their the hip and to the bottom of their glutes so you're just like literally up against their bum. I'm going to thread a needle, my hand, through the inside of their thigh. So let's do it at the same time. And also in the break, you can practice more of that spine stuff. Sorry, just from the time I wanted to do more. And you can catch the inner ankle. Now, my left hand is stabilizing here. My knees are together and as close into the body as you can see at the side of the bum. And then I can just leverage and draw him onto my lap. This is called like improv. Yeah. Basic move. Yeah. Well, they got it from time after, I think. Um, and then you can just draw them onto your thighs. They're not quite there. And you can mm -hmm. you can cheat. You can say, can you help me? You know. <laughs> say, come on, just come on a bit. If they're, if they're, if they're massive, just ask yeah. them, you know. It's no problem. <laughs> yeah. They'll help you a bit. And so they're resting. Their sacrum is on your thighs. So if they're not close enough and you need to get close, so you've got this bent leg here, so what to do with it? You want to imagine you're going for a breaststroke over and catch hold of the outer hip. Now this is again that, that, that tight line in the glute where the uh, tiger drinking water position is, yeah? So we can find that dip, for most people there's a lot of holding there. It comes up into the QL, the quadrus lumborum, so it's, it's tight. Off. Now we're just going to rock. Rocking them on your lap. Oh, that's a good way to do it. And you can just see that the fingers here are just right into that side of the glute there. So you're just releasing, rocking. I'm just moving up and down a little bit, but that IT band be quite tight. So once I've had this, not this isn't for everyone, but some people you might feel they're open for it. The first option is to stretch out in banana pose. So this is the banana split and I straighten my arm. So some people might, that's way too much. So you might just hook them. Too much for me. <laughs> yeah. So then just hook her over your knee, uh, sorry, over your shoulder. That's it. So that's an option if they can't do banana split. You just put them over the back if that's, and don't worry if it doesn't do much. The point is to just expose the back of that sciatic line again. Just give it a little squeeze to release any tension there. Um, if they're full yogis, you'll find that you can keep going and their legs can go all the way towards their head. So once you have that, you just slowly lower the leg. They're still on your body. You bring their hands or you ask them to bring their hands up over their head. So then, and Will's going to help me just because of pregnancy, but you'll be able to roll them like a forklift truck all the way onto, your, onto their side. Again, if they're big and heavy, just ask them to help. You know? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's no big deal. This is where you know it's quite it's quite intimate, and uh, so that's why you might leave it out if you feel it's too intimate. But it's a really amazing cranial hold here. Now this is help. 
it can be tight on the IT band. For some men, they're quite tight there, but it tends to be men more than women. But if you want to, to make it easier for them, you can cap, hold, and bend their, their knees if they let you bend them. Arjun, let your knees bend. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can cut like That's less intense for them on that gallbladder line. Yeah? So there's that option, or you can just let it rest down. And then I like to place my left hand on the sacrum as a cranial sacral hold. And then I just create a little bit of attraction. I just create a little bit of a head massage just to bring him to La La Land. A little bit of a shampoo. And then just hold the head at the occipital ridge there. Just hold it. And this is a, a really, it can be a really nice place to end in. There's so much more I wanted to do, but I'm going to have to end here. <laughs> yeah. And so once you have this, there's a very subtle thing, but it's very powerful. You're going to roll them onto your hand in a cranial hold, and you're going to slide the sacrum this way. So I'll try and demonstrate it really slow. I roll them, and I start to draw that way. And then I roll them off my knees, take my knees out, and I still keep my hand there. And that's like in cranial sacrum, you let that sound. Then I slide to lengthen the tailbone and draw away. Once they're here, just to reset the body, I just create a little soft, Rocking motion. Mm. It's what we call pulsing. Yeah. yeah. Pulsing, yeah. And that little rocking pulsing here. It's not much fun. I'm just passing again between one hip bone and the other. Mm. And then I like to sort of stabilise by end, ending on the dantian here with one hand and the other hand on the heart. 